Thank you. Uh, today we are um, recording the presentation that we made on January the 28th. And uh, we are redoing it because we are wanting to have a better sound for this video. So we'll go over the presentation we gave back then. And at the end of the presentation, we'll go over some Q&As that uh, people asked during the presentation. So this presentation has two parts. First, we'll go over the different varieties of avocados that we grow here or that we recommend for Central Florida. And then we'll have a hands-on um, close-up presentation on how do we graft avocado trees that you can graft yourself at home. So uh, thanks for uh, watching this video. And um, there we go. So, um, here at A Natural Farm, we grow about 12 different varieties of uh, avocado trees, and we wanted to show you the 10 that are the most popular for here, the ones that will be the most cold hardy for the area, that will range from Ocala to maybe south of Tampa. So first of all, we wanted to ask, a uh, good question is why should we grow avocado trees? And um, first of all, you could see Avocados make a really great ornamental plant. They make a nice tree that could be fairly compact. It could get large, but it could stay small as well. It makes beautiful flowers, and then of, of course has um, a lot of fruits. So first of all, it's, a, it's an attractive plant that could be kept small and um, very prolific. One tree will produce about 150 to 500 fruits when it's mature. So when the tree reach about 15 feet tall, by maybe 15, 20 feet wide, it could produce a lot of fruit. So it's a very prolific tree, similar to mango or peach trees. Um, obviously, the, the fruits are delicious. They're very nutritious also, have a lot of vitamins, minerals. So it's a, it's a great uh, fruit for the family. These are the varieties that um, we recommend for Central Florida. Um, in order, by preference for us, we have the Winter Mexican, the Fantastic, the Brogdon, the Joey Mexicola Grande, Lila or Lila, the Super House, also called Ulala, the Verts, also called Little Cattle, Oro Negro, and the Day. These are the varieties that we recommend for Central Florida. They'll range, as far as hardiness, from about 15 degrees when they're mature up to about 26, 28 degrees, all those varieties. So now we'll go over the detail for each variety. Uh, the first one here is called Winter Mexican. Winter Mexican is our favorite. That's probably the variety we sell the most. It's very similar to the Haas. So the texture, the flavor, and the, um, the, the size of the fruits is similar to the Haas. A very compact, prolific variety. Very cold hardy down to about 24 degrees when mature. When mature means when the tree is about 8 to 10 feet tall. Again, when your tree is smaller than that, we recommend to protect it when the temperature drops below about 35 degrees. So it's very important that you understand that those varieties are cold hardy when they're mature. Until that point, you need to protect them when it gets colder. 
Again, very similar to the fruit of the, of the has that is typical to California or Mexico. And then the, that also the big advantage of this variety is that it ripens from November to March. The fruits do not really ripen on the tree. So if you have 200 fruits hanging from your tree, you could pick the fruits from November until March and let the, tree, the fruits ripen in your kitchen. You pick a few at a time and they'll ripen in your kitchen. Type B, we'll talk about type A and type B later on, but this particular variety is type B. That's winter Mexican. This second one is called Fantastic, also called Prior in some places, or Del Rio. Um, this is one of our hardiest variety. This uh, variety is hardy down to, some people say 15 or 18 degrees when mature. It's a fruit uh, very similar size as the, as the has. It's a dark green fruit with a smooth skin, uh, kind of a bell shape, and it ripens in the summer, July, August. Later on, we'll show you a slide with all the varieties that are, we'll show you the, the graph with the months overlapping between the varieties. This is type A, fantastic type A. Right now, we are uh, mid-February, they are full of flowers. So we'll show you a picture later on of a flower. This is a fantastic here, hundreds of flowers right now. This is the next one called Brogdon. Brogdon is very good for Central Florida. It's, not, it's hardly down to about 14, 24 degrees. The fruits are very large, about three, four times the size of a house. So a lot of flesh, big seed, but a lot of flesh. It's kind of a yellowish flesh. Uh, buttery, up to 24 ounce. Very good for guacamole, for, for slicing. It's a type B. And they ripen in August, September, October. So it's a summer ripening. Brogdon. Joey. Joey is also very cold, just like the, um, the Lila or the Fantastic, it's 18 degrees. The, the drawback of the Joey is that it's a very small fruit. It's a smooth skin, and a lot of people eat them like an apple. So you eat the skin and the flesh together. It's somewhat hard to separate the fruit from the, from the seed, so that's why it's e easier to eat it like an apple. Ripening July, August. It could be A or B. We're not sure, uh, or it's probably both A and B. The next one here is called Mexicola Grande. Mexicola Grande is a very compact tree. The, the one we have here at the farm is, uh, is like a, without any really serious pruning, it's like a, like a full shrub, like almost like an oval shape. Um, hardy down to 25 degrees, very compact, very good for small backyards. Um, for small backyards, the Mexicola Grande and the, and the um, Winter Mexican would make two really good back, back, small backyard varieties. Um, the fruits are similar to the has. It's a smooth skin, and it's a summer ripening fruit type A. That's the Mexicola Grande. The next one here is called Lila or Lila. In some places, they're called Opal. Semi-dwarf, very compact as well, very cold hardy, down to 18 degrees, and um, very rich, nutty, uh, ripen in, a, in the summer, July, July through September. It's a type A. It's um, similar to the fantastic as far as the hardiness and the, um, the overall look of the fruit. This one here is um, becoming one of the uh, favorite also for Central Florida as far as a winter variety. More for the Orlando area, not so much for the Ocala area because it's, it's not quite as cold hardy. It's hardy down to 26 degrees when mature, but the fruit is pretty much very similar to the Haas, um, but larger, larger than the Haas, so more flesh available. Um, same texture, 
flavor, but it's better suited than the Haas. The Haas is better for the dry climate, like Mexico or California. But for us, Super Haas would be a better variety. Ripened in the fall, September, November, and it's a type A. This next one here is also very popular because it's kind of a semi-dwarf variety. Verts are also called little cattle in some places. Um, similar to the Haas, the fruit is larger than the Haas, but very similar texture and flavor. 46 degrees hardiness, and that's also a winter, January through March, type A. So this variety would be good if you want fruits ripening in the winter, similar to the winter Mexican, but tends to stay smaller. This one here is called Oro Negro. It's a yellow flesh, fairly large fruit, almost round, and it's uh, very buttery and creamy texture, very high in oil content. Ripening December through January, and it's a type B. Tends to get fairly large tree as well, but you can keep it small. And then this is the day. This is our last variety that we are presenting today. Day is, um, is a larger fruit, more like a bell-shaped fruit, uh, green, green skin, and it's hardy down to 25 degrees. They're also uh, blooming heavily right now. Um, ripening September through October, and it's a type B. So day, um, the, the look of the fruit is similar to what you would see in South Florida, but it's a pretty hardy variety. All right, type B. And now we're going to show you the, the chart with all those different varieties. All right, so this is, uh, and again, this presentation we will post on our website, and you can always contact us if you have any more questions. We'll uh, be happy to help you out. Um, so you see here, Technically, if you have two or three varieties of avocados, you can have fruits pretty much most of the year, except for a few late spring months. For here, usually if you're in the Orlando area, most people, if they want fruits in the summer and the winter, they'll have a combination of like a winter Mexican and a brogdon, and that will give them a long harvest season. All right, now the type A and type B um, concept. Basically, the avocado trees are both male, and the, the flowers are both male and female. Uh, each tree has male flowers, female flowers. So um, the, the situation is that the female flowers do not usually, are not really ready at the same time as the male flower and that's where the A and the B comes into the picture. So a type A avocado, the female flower will be ready in the morning and its male flowers ready in the afternoon. And a type B is the other way around. The, the female flowers are ready in the afternoon and the male in the morning. That's why it's important or it's, it could be important to mix a type A variety and a type B variety in your yard. However, in Florida, it's been proven that because of our moisture in the air, type of each tree will pollinate itself. So basically, if you want to have just one tree in your yard, you could still have fruits and not have to have a multiple variety. But if you're in a more dry climate, like California or Mexico, it's better to have two trees, one A and one B. All right, now we were on, we'd like to avoid to uh, talk about pruning, removing of suckers, pollination, and the harvest of the, uh, the fruits. T talking about pruning, basically, the goal is to keep your tree in somewhat um, smaller size where you can harvest the fruits. And to give you an example, this tree here is being grown on a trellis. 
So if you have a small space, you can prune your tree and grow it flat. And you can grow it along, your, along a wall. So if you have a limited space, you could still grow an avocado tree and keep it on the trellis. Uh, as far as the pruning of the trees, usually we recommend that when the tree gets about six feet tall, like this tree behind me, we recommend to cut the top, remove the top of the tree, and it will make the lateral branches come out. So the goal is to keep your tree smaller, but bushier. We have trees in the back that are maybe 15 feet tall and 20, 20 25 feet wide. This way it's easier to, keep the, to pick the fruits and you actually have more fruits because there's more light coming into the tree. So that's for the, for the pruning. And when your tree grows, again, you're trying to stimulate the growth of lateral branches in order to have a, a wider tree. As far as remo removal of suckers, uh, we're gonna talk about grafting in a, in a few minutes. And what happens is when your tree is grafted, the, the point below the graft union is the, the, um, the seedling or the rootstock could shoot little branches. So it's critical to remove the suckers or the little, tw the little twigs growing below the graft union in order to keep most of the energy of the tree into the top of the tree where the fruits will come from. As far as pollination, we talked about A and B. Um, avocados are pollinated by bees, wasp, butterflies, and a bunch of other insects. And it's always critical in your yard, like every other tree, to mix uh, pollinators, um, plants that are attracting pollinators in your yard. So for here, we use a lot of sweet almond bush um, and um, plumbagos and other native, some other native plants too, um, to attract the pollinators. So it's, it's good to try to have plants that are always blooming all year round. And obviously try, we do not use any chemicals here. It's important not to use chemicals to hurt those pollinators. Harvesting, ripening, and storage. We uh, mentioned earlier that a lot of varieties will not ripen on a tree. So when you harvest your fruits, you just keep, you pick two or three fruits, put them in your kitchen, don't put them in the fridge, and then let them ripen as you, as you need them to eat the fruits. All right, now we're gonna talk about grafting, and we'll have a, a session where we show how technically you do it, you can do it at your, at your house. Um, why should we graft avocado trees? Uh, basically, the main reason is to get fruits quicker. If you do not grow, if you do not graft an avocado tree, and you grow it from a, from a peat, you could grow an avocado from a peat, you grow it, and the tree will grow. If you do not graft that seedling or that plant grown from a seed, it could take 10 to 15 years to get fruits, to produce fruits. So the main reason to graft is to have fruits earlier on your tree. From the time you graft your tree until you harvest fruits, it could be about two years. So it's a very quick process. Uh, the second reason why you should graft your tree is so that you know exactly what type of fruits you're gonna get. Because if you grow a tree from a seed, the fruits coming from that tree may not be the same as the seed you planted. First of all, it'll take longer. Second of all, there's, the fruits will not be true to seed. So you want to know what fruit you will produce from your tree. That's why you will select the scions from a known variety onto your seedling. And then the other, another reason to graft could be to have two varieties on the same tree, two or three varieties. So you could have one tree, one trunk, with two or three different varieties, one that produces in the, in the summer, one that produces in the winter. Also, you could mix the A and the B on the same tree. The other last reason we mentioned is that if you have a tree that has been producing fruits for many years, but you don't like that fruit, then you can cut your tree down 
and regraft with the variety that you would like to harvest. So you're modifying the fruit from your tree. Those are the reasons why we, uh, we recommend to graft avocado trees. All right, so the tools needed to graft, you can use um, different tools have been used to graft, but on the top left here, this is a, a tool that will match the, uh, the scion and the, and, the, um, and the rootstock, but for avocados here, we're not using that tool. We're using the bottom right here. It's a uh, grafting knife, and that knife will be used to, uh, to slice the scion and to slice the rootstock. And then it's important also to have uh, an antiseptic spray bottle alcohol or hydrogen peroxide to, um, to disinfect. You need to disinfect your hands, you need to disinfect the scion, the rootstock, uh, in order to not introduce a virus or bacteria to your plant. And then the, the uh, grafting tape is also uh, good. One type we use is called buddy tape. So it's, got, it's a waxy material, very stretchable material. We'll, um, I'll show you. So again, you need the grafting knife, the uh, disinfectant. This is the grafting tape, body tape, and then the, um, you need some uh, sharp pruners too to cut your, uh, your rootstock. And then there's different types of graft. Again, the, um, the grafting, there's two, point, two parts to the grafting. The scion, which is the part that you will take from a mature tree, the little part, and the rootstock, which is your, your tree that was grown from a seed that you're grafting. There are different types of grafting that can be used. The, uh, the one we will talk about is the top cleft of V-graft. And then you could use a side graft, a veneer graft, or a bar graft. A bar graft will be used to graft older trees. For example, we talked about when you have an older tree and you want to change the variety, you will cut the trunk and use the bar graft to graft your, your tree. All right, so now we're going to talk about the top cleft or the V graft. So basically what we're doing is we have the the scion that comes from a mature tree. See, this one is blooming here. And then this scion will be grafted into your uh, rootstock or seedling, the plant that was grown from a seed. And um, so this is the most used technique of grafting, at least here in Florida, the top cliff or uh, V-graft. And um, so the goal here is to match the cambium uh, vascular system of the scion to the cambium of the rootstock in order for the union to take. And that union will become one new plant, the union of the two plants. And you could see on the, uh, on the slide here, basically what we're doing is we are, we are inserting the scion into the rootstock. So the rootstock is cut, and we're inserting the scion into that rootstock. It will be wrapped to uh, keep the moisture of the scion, and then um, it will be inserted. And basically, you could see on the on this picture here, if your scion is small is smaller than the rootstock, as long as you match that cambium layer, the green part between the two, then the union can take. If you're not matching the cambium of the rootstock and the scion, then your graft will definitely fail. So that's the concept. And again, in a few minutes, we'll do, a, do one example, and we'll see exactly how it works. This here is a side graft. So this one is uh, the scion, instead of being inserted vertically into the rootstock, will be sliced and inserted on the side of the rootstock, and the rootstock is not cut to insert the, the, uh, the scion. 
The next one here is called veneer graft. For veneer graft, instead of grafting a scion, like a branch like that, into your, uh, your rootstock, you're basically slicing a piece of your, your stem, including one or two eyes, and you're inserting that one or two eyes into the side, on the side of the rootstock. It's also called budding, and it's mostly used for persimmons, citrus trees, uh, peach, plum, nectarine. A lot of fruit trees are a veneer graft. And then the last one is called the bark graft. So the bark graft is when you're actually grafting a larger branch or the whole trunk. And a lot of, a lot of time it's used to modify the, either you have an older tree in your yard and it was never grafted and you want to graft it now, you can do it even if your, your tree is older or if you have a grove and then you don't like, or your customers don't like the fruit you're, you're producing and you want to modify that variety. That's called the, the bar graft. So here you could see you're inserting your scion on the side of your trunks. You could do one, two, or three, or four um, scions into the bark of your, uh, your tree. All right, so now those are the steps on doing the grafting, and then we'll, um, we'll show you the, the close-up of the grafting. Um, so again, the, the first step is to disinfect your hands and your tools with a hydrogen peroxide or alcohol, and you could use a spray bottle like that to spray, spray your tools, the grafting knife, and the, um, the shears. And then, gra and then disinfect your hands. Again, the goal is to not insert bacteria or virus into your, your graft. All right, so the first, the second step is to prepare your scion. So basically to prepare your scion is your, your, again you cut a, a, the, a part of a branch of a mature tree and then you will um, cut a piece about four inches. So you're taking that, that, uh, that plant and then you're cutting it about four to six inches. And then you will um, remove the leaves and then you will, you will first wrap this uh, scion. So we'll, we're not going to do the presentation right now. We'll do the close-up next. But basically we'll wrap the scion, slice the tip, of the scion, like a wedge, and then we'll cut the rootstock in the center and then insert the scion into the rootstock and then tape the union. So that's gonna be the detail. So we're, we're just gonna do the next slide and then we'll go in details. After it's done, this is the result on the left here. You have, um, everything is well, taped so the, the moisture stays in your scion, otherwise it will dry out and die. And then in a about two to three weeks, if your graft is sticking, you see the buds come out through the tape. The grafting tape is a breathable material, but it keeps the moisture and the, uh, the, the eye will push through, the bud will push through that tape. And on the right here, you see another two weeks later, the plant is, is growing pretty quickly. One thing to do uh, after you're done grafting in the following weeks is make sure you remove the suckers. Anything that grow below your cut point, your graft union, anything growing below that union you want to remove, otherwise the energy will go into those suckers and it will make your plant weaker. So this is a presentation. Now, before we do the close-up, we had a few questions during our presentation on uh, January the 28th, and I just wanted to read them. Um, one of the questions was, can I grow an avocado in a pot forever? I am in New York or uh, New Orleans, somewhere where they, they don't really live outside. 
can I grow an avocado in a pot and have fruits? So the answer is yes. You can have a, a tree like these. These trees are in 30-gallon uh, pots. We have some in 65-gallon pots. You can grow an avocado tree in a pot, keep it small. It will produce fruits. And, I, and you could do it even here. If it gets really cold and you're in a northern area, you just slide your tree in the garage. So yes, you can grow avocado in pots. Uh, the second question that a lot of people ask all the time is, do I need two plants to produce fruits? We talked about it basically depending on where you are. If you're in California or Mexico um, and it's a drier climate, yes, you need a type A and a type B variety. When you're in Florida, South Carolina, coastal South Carolina, Florida, because of our moisture in the air, then you could get fruits even with one tree. What happens too uh, often is even if you would need cross-pollination, you may have a tree in your neighbor's yard or a mile away, and the bees will move from tree to tree. So you will get cross-pollination even without having two trees in your yard. And then the, the, one of the other question is, do, um, how long does it take to get fruits? We sell a lot of three-gallon trees, so they're about two feet tall. From that point, those trees are about six months old from a graft. It will take about two years to start bearing fruits, kind of like a mango. So two to three years from a small tree, you will start harvesting fruits. And those are some of the, the main questions. One more question was, what type of soils do I use to grow my trees? Here in Central Florida, we have a lot of sand, and it's, it's a good, good soil for the avocados or the mangoes because that soil will drain really well. Um, one of the issues with avocados is have a soil that, is, that stays too damp, too moist, too damp. If you have a soil that stays too damp or moist or clay soil, you want to elevate your soil. So you create a berm with probably sand, and then you plant your tree in the berm. The goal is to have good drainage so that the roots do not stay too wet. All right, thanks again for uh, watching this presentation. Again, this presentation was done on January the 28th in front of a, a good group of uh, good audience. And we are re-recording to have a better sound quality. You're always welcome to, to contact us if you have more questions at um, anaturalfarm.com. Here is the next uh, part of the presentation. So first, we're going to go over the tools you need to graft your tree. And then we will do the presentation of the actual grafting of the tree. We are using a top cliff graft here for the avocado, which is the most used method of grafting. All right, so the first tool you're going to need is uh, sharp pruners. This will help you cut the rootstock and uh, have a clean cut. The second tool is the grafting knife. This is uh, one of the options. Different blades, sharp grafting knife. Then you need a grafting tape. This particular one we use here is called buddy tape. It's a brandful buddy tape. It's a stretchable material. It's a breathable material. So when you graft, when you uh, wrap your scion, it will keep the moisture but it will also let the scion breathe. And when the scion grows, it will, the, the, the scion will grow, the buds will go through the tape. So you do not have to remove the tape. It's biodegradable. And then the last is a um, disinfectant. This, here we use a hydrogen peroxide. You could use alcohol. And it's in order to disinfect your cutting tools, your, uh, your graft uh, scion, and the part of the grafting union and your hands. The goal is so that you do not bring bacteria or virus into your graft union. All right, so now let's go over the steps. We'll, um, we'll have several steps. The first step is to prepare the scion. Again, the scion is the, the part that you cut off a mature tree and you're inserting into the rootstock. Second step, prepare the rootstock. The third step, is to insert the scion into the rootstock. And the last step will be to, gra to uh, wrap the two scion and rootstock, wrap that graft union. Perfect. So first step, prepare the scion. 
So the scion we cut off a mature tree. This is um, a piece of um, mature tree. The, the blooms are here. So we remove from this, we cut this piece here. So this is the scion. The scion comes from a mature tree. The goal is to insert that scion into the rootstock and it will trick the plant. The plant will think that it's now mature and it will start producing fruits. First thing to do, so this part is about four to six inches. First thing to do is again disinfect. Make sure you, uh, your hands are disinfect, disinfected and your uh, cutting tools. So this is the, uh, the grafting knife. This is your pruning shears. So make sure that you disinfect those before you cut your scion or the rootstock. And then, so the next step is to wrap your, uh, your scion. So we are starting about half an inch to an inch above the, um, the bottom of your scion. And you're gonna you're gonna right, rotate and wrap this tape by stretching it all around. Again, the goal is to wrap this scion to prevent it from dehydrating, from drying out. When your piece is too short, you grab another piece. These are pre perforated pieces. So you go up by turning your scion and you wrap it up. When you get to the top, you wrap the top and you come back down. And then you pull it and it's, it sticks. So that material sticks really well. So this is the one part ready. This is the, um, the scion part. Second step is to slice a wedge into your your scion. So you're cutting by different motions. One side and then you go 180 degrees and you go the other side. So the goal is to have a, a pretty good section. If you have little pieces here then you cut them off. You want to have a clean cut. You do not want to put your fingers on that cut. And you make it like a wedge. As pointy as possible. All right, so this is the... Uh, It's pretty much your prepared scion. You see, that's a very pointy. Remove all the little pieces, but do not touch with your fingers. So we are done preparing the scion. Now we will prepare the rootstock. So this is the tree we are grafting today. This tree was grown from a seed. And if we don't graft it, it will take 10 years to produce fruits. So what we're doing first, we're going to graft. We're trying to match as, as best as possible the diameter of the scion with the rootstock. If it's, again, if it's not the same diameter, the goal is to line up the cambium of the rootstock and the scion. So you slide it on the side. What we're doing is we're keeping the leaves here, but we are removing any branch that will come from that rootstock. Because if you don't remove those branches, then the energy will go into those branches and not into the scion. We're gonna remove a few leaves to make it more clear. All right, so again, we are trying to match the diameter between the rootstock and the scion. So we're gonna cut here. You make a clean cut of your rootstock. The next step is to slice, to make a vertical slice into the, uh, the rootstock. 
disinfect the tools. We're going to make a cut here in the center of this wood stock. Try to do in the center. And basically, you're holding your knife, crafting knife, and you're going down about the same depth as the cut, the wedge you made into your scion. Again, you're not touching with your fingers that part there. The next step is to insert the scion into the rootstock. So you slice it down, you insert it. And basically, you want to make sure they are lined up. The rootstock and the scion are lined up. If you see here, they're pretty much lined up on this side. They're not really lined up on that side, but that's fine. As long as it's lined up on the one side. And then the next step is to, to wrap both the scion and the rootstock to make a, a um, strong union. So you want to pull, but you don't want to pull too much because you don't want to disconnect these two parts. I put another piece here. So now both the scion and the rootstock are connected and it's all covered so there's no uh, loss of moisture. They can breathe but they cannot lose moisture. And what's going to happen is within two to three weeks the eyes here, one or two buds will push through and grow through the tape and then within one, about two months, one to two months, it could be about 12 inches long. Uh, when you do your grafting, ideally you want to put your plant, if it's in the pot, in the shade so that the, um, the plant does not get hurt by the sun. That material all kind of acts as a shading material as well, but you want to try to put that plant in the best conditions. If you're in an area that gets cold, of course, you don't want to keep your plant outside. Um, the other thing, too, is as the plant grows, some of the buds below that grafting union will start to open up. So as they open up, you want to pinch them off. If anything below the cut, so here we made the cut about two, in, two feet up. Usually, we will graft at the base of the avocado tree so we don't have to remove the suckers or the buds below the graft as it grows but this is just for the just to show you the graft um, to remove anything below that union as the tree grows and only keep the top growing also make sure you name you you put a label so that you know which particular variety this plant is if it's a joey a brogdon a has super has whatever variety and you keep watering your plant normally about three times a week. So that's um, the end of the presentation. Thank you again. Take me back to a place where I felt at home. Take me back to a day when we weren't alone. Take me back to an age when the world felt small. Way back before we blew it all Take me back to a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small